Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. AEA says first quarter avionic sales are somewhat disappointing. The Sikorsky S92 rig approach is okay to go with the ASA. Ultralights mix with the big guys at Dayton safely. I'm Brie Cross, it is June 19th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Aircraft Electronics Association has released its first quarter 2015 avionics market report, and AEA President Paula Dirk says it is somewhat disappointing. In the first three months of the year, total worldwide business and general aviation avionics sales amounted to a bit more than $587 million, as reported by participating companies. This figure represented a 9.9% decrease in sales compared to the first quarter 2014, which is more in line with the first quarter sales of 2013. Of the more than $587 million in first quarter 2015 sales, 52.8% came from avionics equipment installed by airframe manufacturers during original production sales. The retrofit market amounted to 47.2% of the first quarter sales. Dirk said, quote, the rest of 2015 will be interesting to watch as the general aviation electronics industry is coming off its largest convention and trade show ever and expects increased activity around the installation of mandated ADSB out equipment. We'll also be paying close attention to the strength of the U.S. dollar and its impact on international sales in the coming quarters." End quote. Rig Approach provides helicopter operators with an automated fully coupled approach to offshore rig and platform landings and is an option on the Sikorsky S-92 helicopters. This system was certified by the FAA in May 2013. The National Civil Aviation Agency of Brazil and Transport Canada certified rig approach earlier this year, and now EASA has joined with their certification. Dan Hunter, director of the S-92 program, said, quote, reducing cockpit workload is a key safety feature that benefits our customers and their passengers, especially under challenging weather and operating conditions. With the European certification of rig approach, we expect to see this key functionality adopted in the North Sea and surrounding region through new aircraft or straightforward retrofits to aircraft already operating in the region." End quote. These helicopters perform search and rescue missions, head of state missions, as well as a variety of transportation missions for offshore oil and gas crews utility and airline passengers. After the break, ultralights join the big air show. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. While massive military jets and other high-performance aircraft will dominate the static display area at Dayton International Airport, spectators will also have the chance to discover the world of light sport and ultralight aircraft, the smallest, simplest machines one can fly. Several ultralight type of light airplanes are scheduled to be on display both days of the weekend air show. The lineup includes examples of Challenger, Phantom, Quicksilver, Rands, Titan, Exxon Aircraft, and others. The ultralight display is new to the air show this year. Paul Linda Mood, director of Dayton Ultralights, an informal group of recreational flyers based at Marine Airport, said, quote, Ultralight flying is largely about the simplicity, the romance, and the glory days of flying, 
the sheer exhilaration of being part of the wind, the sky, and the elements." End quote. It's fitting that recreational flying is alive and well in the Dayton area, the home of the Wright brothers. It's Friday and that means that it's time for a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. The balloon is aloft once again to float the idea of privatizing various functions of the FAA. A bill is being proposed to separate ATC from the FAA again. Here's Jim with his thoughts on the subject. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. Well, it seems like every couple of months, uh, either a political animal or one of the pundits out there seems to think that the answer to all things ATC and all the issues we have with a growing and increasingly complex air traffic control system is to privatize it. Well, privatization has worked in a number of venues, but not in such complex animals as the ATC system. And the fact of the matter, more than anything else, is that the ATC system has to be beholden to the taxpayer, to the users, to the government, and to the world at large. And privatization, well, that just puts one more series of uh, rules and bureaucracies in the way and ultimately winds up setting the stage, even a foundation, for additional charges, additional complexities, and ultimately making sure that only the largest, most well-heeled users are the ones who benefit most from the system. So with uh, Representative Schuster deciding that uh, basically the government can't run ATC, and he's not totally wrong there, by the way, don't, don't let me kid you, but saying that privatization is going to be the answer, well, that's just not it. We know what happens in privatization. The rules get more complex. The little guy, the folks who provide uh, a tremendous amount of enrichment to the transportation infrastructure of the world, but not the airlines, of course, uh, well, they wind up getting backseat to everything. The airlines control this, and in the long run, the airlines will be making most of the decisions. And I guarantee you, based on previous activities and some of their looking down their nose at GA and BizAv in the past, who they consider to be a nuisance, if not competition, well, we're not going to do well. And if they're calling the shots, and if the bureaucracies are calling the shots, and if the money's calling the shots, the only way we're going to have equal access is to pay more a lot more and keep paying. I don't believe in it. I don't like it. I don't think privatization is the answer. If somebody shows me a system that would guarantee proper access to GA, I'd be happy to look at it, but I don't believe it exists. And knowing the way our governments work and knowing the money grab that occurs in these situations, well, let's face it, I'm not only not convinced, but the fact of the matter is, is I am violently opposed at this point to any talk of privatization until the system overall is overhauled. And let's face it, the last thing we need to do under the circumstances is put more rules and more complexity in there. I'm in favor of far less. I'm looking at ways now of how to get the FAA out of our back pocket, out of our lives as much as possible. There's no doubt that they have a role, but they don't have as great a role as they've crafted for themselves. And aviation, and specifically sport, general and business aviation, are all the poorer for it. Privatization, not a chance. We are opposed. We will fight it. We will continue to fight it. We hope you will, too, at least until something bigger, better, and certainly more equitable comes along. But as yet, haven't seen it. Don't know what it is. Don't believe it's currently possible in this economic and political climate. For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. And hey, by the way, guys, just a little bit over 30 days to Oshkosh. We'll see you there. After these messages, Boeing is ready for ramped up aircraft production. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero.
Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Boeing targets a second consecutive year of record commercial airplane deliveries. Boeing reported it has increased airplane production by more than 60% over the past five years by building their products on a lean and responsive production system. IKO has revised its dangerous goods document to prohibit passengers and crew from carrying e-cigarettes and other battery-powered electronic smoking devices in checked baggage. E-cigarette heating elements have accidentally activated, resulting in fires in checked baggage. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden signed agreements with two European partners to advance Mars exploration during meetings at the Paris Air Show. Components to be provided by the partners include camera technology, environmental monitoring, and the high-gain antenna. Boeing and Aircap announced an order for 137 MAX 8s at the Paris Air Show. The order, valued at $10.7 billion, is the first 737 MAX order for Aircap. Boeing says this will give Aircap's customers a unique advantage in the single-aisle market. The global community that operates Airbus Helicopters Rotocraft now has its own association to share their experience, expertise, and passion. Called the H Pilot Club, it was officially launched at the Paris Air Show. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The concept phase startup for a new European helicopter, Airbus Helicopters X6, was announced at the Paris Air Show. This initiates a two-year definition period on this next-generation heavy-lift rotocraft that will be tailored for the civil market. Major marketing, architecture, and design choices for the twin-engine aircraft will be assessed to meet customer operational requirements during the concept phase. The X-6 is the newest arrival in Airbus Helicopters H-Generation. In defining and developing the X-6, it is expected to be a twin-engine rotocraft that is mature and all-weather ready, including full de-icing. One of the major innovations to be integrated on the X-6 is the fly-by-wire flight control system. Once adequate program maturity has been achieved in the concept phase, a subsequent development phase will follow, leading to an X-6 entry into service anticipated in the 2020s. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday.